In this video, I'm going to show you how you can continue to train even when your foot is broken or injured. Nearly every athlete has encountered some form of foot or ankle injury at some point in time. And because most athletes use their legs to do their sport or to train for their sport, it can be really hard to stay in shape during that injury. But in this video, I have a batch of exercises that I'm going to show you so that you can continue training in the weight room and keep at least some semblance of strength or conditioning for your chosen sport. So quite a while ago now, my wife, who is an elite level runner, unfortunately broke her foot and was un unable to run for a long time. Now, during that time, she progressed from basic body weight and core stability type exercises to some slightly more advanced exercises as her foot began to heal. Now, she still wasn't able to do full weight bearing activities, especially not outside of her boot, but we were able to advance her progression a little bit in the gym so that she could continue getting stronger for when she returned to running. Now, the first exercise that she's demonstrating here is a seated clean with dumbbells. Now, similar to many of the exercises in this video, this seated dumbbell clean has been adapted from the standing variation. Because she can't put full weight on her foot, we're going to the bench. However, she's still able to produce some amount of lower body power through her glutes. Notice that her legs are firmly planted on the floor. And although her low back is bending just a little bit with every rep, that is okay, even from my point of view as a coach, because the load is very low and because we're still getting a little bit of hip extension on every rep. Notice how she's trying her best to get her elbows up and through to catch the loads. And yes, the dumbbells are arcing out just a little bit, but hey, we're adapting this so that she can still get some sort of a training effect. Now this exercise is going to explosively work the lumbar spinal erectors, the glutes, the upper back, and to some extent, the traps and shoulders. The next variation she's doing with some lighter dumbbells because now we're adding a press into the top. And again, this is great because now we're involving the pushing exercises and this is a lift that is a little bit more dynamic, it's a little bit more complex. And so for athletes who are used to moving in a multi-joint type of manner with full body explosive movements, this helps to keep training a little bit novel to keep it from getting too boring while you're injured. Now the next movement she's doing is a bent over row, then into the clean and the press. And again, we're just adding a little bit more complexity into the training because most likely as your foot has been healing, training has become somewhat boring and it's been hard to get a full body stimulus where a lot of your muscle mass is activated at the same time. And so that's why we incorporated these bent over row into clean and presses. Now you'll notice as Lisa is doing the row, she could do a little bit better job keeping her shoulders back and her chest out. She just has some tightness on the anterior aspect, but you wanna keep your shoulders back as you're doing these and start with light weights. And again, building off of the last two exercises, now we're adding in the rows. So not only do we have the posterior chain and the pushing muscles that are being activated with this movement, but also the pulling muscles as well. So upper back, lats, and biceps are activated on those dumbbell rows. Now next you see her doing a one arm dumbbell clean from that seated position. I really like the single arm version of a dumbbell clean because it allows the body to rotate a little bit and we get some of that rotational ability in the midsection as well. And you can use slightly higher loads. I also like that the load can start in the center of your body and then when you catch it, your body can shift to accommodate for that off balance unilateral load. Now again here, we're looking for a nice and snappy pull and you wanna do your best to not muscle this up with your arms. It's an explosive hinge movement and then you swoop under and catch it. And again, similar to the dumbbell cleans, we're using the glutes, lumbar spinal erectors, upper back, maybe a little bit of lat engagement as well uh, to accomplish this exercise, but also some rotational movements of the trunk because of the offset unilateral load. And so we have activation of the internal and external obliques as well. Now this next movement was a mainstay in Lisa's training when she had a broken foot and they were seated kettlebell swings. Notice how she has a really wide stance there on the bench. You don't wanna hit yourself in the adductors with a kettlebell while you're swinging it. Also, you need to be sure that you're not going to pinch your fingers between the kettlebell handle and the bench. So start off with a light weight and going slowly. Lisa had been doing this for several weeks when we, when we filmed this. Notice how she is not rounding her back. She's trying her best to hinge at the hips. And this exercise also does a good job of really opening up the adductors because of that 
active wide stance position where you're hinging down as well. And so I liked it for that reason too, because it really helped Lisa to open up and stretch not only her adductors, but also her hamstrings. Now this exercise is challenging her glutes dynamically as she's explosively hip hinging, maybe a little bit in the lumbar spine as she's isometrically stabilizing and perhaps just a little bit of flexion and extension there in the lumbar spine, upper back as well, especially the traps, and then also forearms because of the grip strength required to hold on to the kettlebell. Now the next movement you've probably seen before and it's a Swiss ball leg curl. So you're lying on your back and you wanna keep the hips elevated as high as possible as you curl the ball underneath your body. Keeping those hips high ensures that you have the glutes turned on or activated, keeping the hips up as you co-contract with the hamstrings. I would suggest putting your arms out as you see Lisa doing to stabilize the body from rocking side to side as you do this. Now, obviously a hamstring curl on a machine would also be a good alternative, but we don't have that in our garage gym. The muscles work here are of course the three hamstring muscles, biceps, femoris, semimembranosus, and semitendinosus, and then also isometrically working the gluteal muscles as well. Here Lisa is transitioning to a single leg version, requires a little bit more stability and is a greater challenge for those hamstring muscles on the working leg. She is keeping her hips low and in the same position. You could also raise the hips just like she did on the bilateral version for an added challenge uh, of the glutes and keeping those hips stable as you go. And here is an example of just that. Now Lisa is raising her hips with every repetition and this is the most challenging version that she's going to show today. And that's because again, we have the glutes stabilizing the hips and keeping them fully extended as the hamstring on that working side curls the ball underneath. And so the hips are rising and lowering with every single rep and the glutes and lower abdominals as well as probably quadratus lumborum, maybe some obliques are really required to stabilize as well. So again, not the greatest force producing exercise, but definitely one that's going to get your heart rate elevated, help you maintain some core stability, some dynamic trunk control, and it targets the hamstrings. Now the next exercise is actually the easiest one to do, and it's clicking the like button right below this video. Doing so really helps out the channel and shows your support and helps me to make more videos just like this one. Next, you see Lisa doing some Swiss ball leg raises, and these are great for the lower abdominals. You could use a Swiss ball, you could use a smash ball, one of those large medicine balls that are uh, at least somewhat soft. You can hold it between your legs, really anything that you can put between your legs and hold at your ankles and raise up and down. You could even do these with just your legs as well. These are really working your hip flexors and lower abs. And my advice is to try to maintain a neutral spine as you do this. You don't want your back to overly arch, especially as you lower your legs during the eccentric portion of this movement. And of course, the primary muscles that are being worked here are the hip flexors and the rectus abdominis. Now the next movement is body weight hip thrust. You can do this by elevating your back on a Swiss ball or on a bench. And it might not look like it, but Lisa's actually putting external hip rotational torque against that band. She's externally rotating against its resistance. It's a very strong and thick band uh, so that she gets further activation of her gluteus medius and minimus during this movement. Body weight hip thrusts uh, for someone like Lisa are pretty easy. And so just that little bit of added challenge can add to not only the novelty and kind of the fun and challenge of the exercise, but also get some more muscle fibers involved. Now, of course, we could make this a little bit more complex by throwing in a bilateral clamshell at the top, right, where we're moving our knees out against that resistance even more once we're already stable and at the top, then coming back in and then completing the hip thrust. This is just a great way, again, to get all three of the gluteal muscles involved in the movement. You could, of course, add a dumbbell or add a barbell across the hips as well for additional load. The only problem with that is then you're pushing harder through that foot or ankle that might be injured and maybe isn't ready to be putting that much force into the ground. Next, we have one-arm dumbbell rows. And of course, you could use any of the machines at the gym to accomplish a row, a seated low row or a high row or a lat pull down. But again, most of us don't have that at our homes. And so in our garage, the best alternative was a one-arm dumbbell row. And this is because a standing barbell row version puts a lot of those forces back down through the ankle and the foot, which are not quite ready to handle them. And so this with the knee on the bench um, is a great way to continue doing heavy rows for the upper back, the lats, 
the biceps without transferring that force to the lower extremity. The next exercise is a kneeling goblet squat. And this one is an interesting one because you don't see it that often in the gym, but it's great because it doesn't put any pressure on the ankle or the foot, but it allows you to get that hip hinge movement similar to a squat while holding a load in that goblet position. You could also do this with the barbell across the back or the front, but it's just a little bit more dangerous because if you go down one way or another, you're not on your feet and so you're less mobile, more likely to get caught under the bar. So that's why I prefer doing it in the goblet position. Now, all you wanna do is keep your knees on some sort of a mat so that you're not grinding your knees into the floor. That could cause further pain or injury and sit your hips back nice and slow and then punch them up and forward as you stand up, putting all that force through your knees and your toes as you're act in that active kneeling stance. Now the kneeling goblet squat is gonna work most of the same muscles that you would during a normal goblet squat, except for there's a little less emphasis on the quads, of course, because we're not going through the same range of motion of knee flexion. So more emphasis on hamstrings, but mostly on the glutes, and then also the upper back as we're keeping that nice stable shelf for the weight out in front. And last but certainly not least, we have dumbbell Romanian deadlifts. And I chose these over the barbell variation for Lisa because again, we're looking to reduce the amount of force going through her ankle and foot while still slowly progressing her from non-weight bearing activities to partial and then eventually full weight bearing activities. So this was a great one to continue to develop the musculature while limiting the force outputs at the foot. Now the muscles that are worked here are the hamstrings and the glutes and then isometrically the low back. You can see that Lisa's going through a pretty extreme range of motion. Uh, she's used to doing these with barbells and when she's been running and doing her mobility drills. Now if I were to critique anything about Lisa's technique here, it would be that she has just the slightest amount of lumbar flexion at the bottom. But hey, it's a low weight and she's pretty highly trained and has handled much higher loads than this, so I'm not too worried about it as her coach. But I would recommend that you make sure you keep a neutral spine, brace with a Valsalva maneuver throughout, especially if you're starting to load this somewhat heavy, and make sure that you're feeling a massive stretch in your hamstrings at the bottom of the movement. This will be working your hamstrings, your glutes, and isometrically working your lumbar erector spine. So you guys, I hope that's helpful to you. And if you're injured and watching this, then I hope you have a speedy recovery. If you haven't already, go ahead and check out the first video that I made showing all of the beginning variations for training when you have a broken or injured foot. They're much lower level, lower forces, mostly core stability, things that you can do in the first weeks as soon as you're cleared by your doctor. That's important. This does not constitute medical advice, but once you're cleared to train, that is a great place to start and then you can proceed to this video. Now, if you click in the description below, I've actually linked a PDF with all of these exercises for your convenience. Go ahead and download that so you can see how I would put these together into an AB style workout that you can progress with over the course of time until you're hopefully out of your boot very soon. So thanks for watching up until this point. And if you want more educational resources in the fields of sports science or strength and conditioning or endurance training and resistance training, check out the channel and I'll see you guys on the next video.